Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person and I've got pretty yarns back on my shelves. Welcome to today's episode of Vlogtober. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know what number we're on now but last few days have just been so busy I haven't really had time to film very much. Um, today I'm going to show you what's on my needles. I've got two new projects on the needles. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit from my workshop at the Knitting Hotel uh, yesterday and um, talk about what's coming up and a little bit of footage from our walk today so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and please leave me a comment oh and i have like a little kind of mini not proper tutorial but like a little mini tip on um and picking brush so i hope you enjoyed this video Okay, so I've actually brought three knitting projects with me. I'm away for one night and I'm teaching both days. I do not need three knitting projects. But I brought my sock project just in case I needed it. This is my um, opal sock that I cast on last weekend. It's in my, um, what's this called? Uh, Black Pearl Magic um, from Black Pearl Magic project bag from Botanical Yarns. Uh, Black Pearl Magic is an american company i think i first saw her bags i think she specializes in these kind of um see-through bags uh, this one's got like a rainbow zip which is fantastic this is a fairly small one so not for a sock project um she does bigger ones as well but she's based in the us and i'd seen her first on the loving stitches youtube channel i think uh Nitt natalie from nitty natty loving stitches uh, youtube channel and but i did want to order from the states because shipping is ridiculous and customs fees and stuff and then i saw that botanical yarns here in the uk was had a special shipment of them so i managed to grab one so i really like that um it is quite stiff i don't know whether i will keep this as a knitting project bag or use it for something else but i just stuck my stuck my sock project in there um, then I've got my other new project bag from Palika Yarns I got about a week ago. Um, I have got, um, let me show you what yarns are in here. So I've got uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Color Lab, DK, grey and this blue colour. This one I started pulling from the centre and it's all turned into a bit of yarn bath really. But I'm basically knitting a pair of brioche hand warmers. These are going to be like a very easy workshop project. I am teaching this workshop on Tuesday, but I wasn't planning to use this project for Tuesday because I don't think it's enough time to get this very simple pattern written up. But maybe I will if I can get it done this weekend. But it's unlikely. But for future brioche workshops, I thought it'd be quite good to have a very simple project. Um, these are going to be wrist warmers or hand warmers worked flat. Um, and then I've got my Little Grey Girl project bag. Um, I'm going on holiday next week and I want to knit a cowl in a tuck stitch pattern. So this is the stitch pattern I want to use. I think it's that way up. It's a tuck stitch pattern. I really like it. Um, I knitted this watch last night. Um, it's not very long but I mainly needed the width. So I've got like a rough tension. Um, measurements really you should knit a swatch much longer than that but I was cheating a bit and I'm using Monosol Uruguay Silk Blend in this really pretty blue color which I think is called Danube um, where is, have I got the other label yes and then the pink uh, is pink blossom so that's pink blossom and that's Danube So this is the um, brioche project I'm working on at the moment. I made basically zero progress on it last night. I knitted about four rows, I think, and then I started the stitch pattern and um, I knitted probably about that much. 
didn't like it and then unpicked it um, I thought I'd finished unpicking but I may have to pick a couple of more rows and then start on version 2 so at first apologies if there's a lot of road noise there's quite a busy road right outside my hotel room and I need to have the window open because it's quite warm in here so when I unpick brioche um, with brioche you work the row once with one colour and then you go back to the beginning and you work it again in the other colour. On one row you knit all the knit stitches and um, slip all the purl stitches and then on the next row you purl all the purl stitches and then you slip all the knit stitches. But when I unpick it, I always unpick the two rows at the same time. I tend to go back row by row when I unpick brioche. Sometimes I might try and do a couple of uh, rows at the same time but usually I go back row by row but I usually do both colours at the same time so it doesn't matter if you hold the on your left or your right hand I just hold it in my left hand because that's the hand I'm most comfortable with knitting I hold my yarn in my, yarn in my left hand when I'm knitting so I will hold both colours so I'm unpicking both the knit and the pearl stitches at the same time which might not sound that strange because if you are hang on that's a decrease I think um I also tend to prefer to do it with the right side facing me. So that's a decrease. And all the decreases in brioche are either double or more. So you have to decrease two stitches or more. Um, so you have to be a bit careful when you unpick the decreases. You also have to watch out for the yarn overs um, that go over some of your stitches. Because you have to make sure you don't drop those. That was a... A double increase so you just have to unpick that was a double increase you just have to pick and pick really slowly and I do recommend especially to start with doing it um, stitch by stitch like this it's frustrating if you have to unpick many rows but unless you put a lifeline in that's what I recommend so here I got a double decrease so I'm gonna unpick that first stitch first and and then I'm gonna catch that and then that's the second De uh, first part of that decrease and then there we go so oh, that was a lorry going past I think uh, so I'm quite careful when I'm picking and picking the decreases just to make sure that um, I don't drop a load of <laughs> stitches um, because that can be a bit awkward to pick up um, there we go Depends on how, what kind of increases and decreases you have. Sometimes I can go in several rows below and then pick several rows in a go. But I wouldn't, I personally would not just pull my needles out and unravel. Because it's a bit of a pain to pick up. Um, I think that's gone back far enough. Um, so I'm going to have a look at it now and see what I'm going to do. So this is the first row of the stitch pattern I did yesterday. And I think I'm going to carry on working from there.
So I've got two projects that cost them before I uh, went away this weekend. So I've been away last two days. It's Sunday today. I was away Friday and Saturday teaching at the Knitting Hotel. And I didn't really film very much. Um, just because when I'm teaching, I get caught up with teaching and I forget. But um, I knitted this swatch before we left. Uh, the grey, well, they're both uh, West Yorkshire Spinners uh, Colour Lab DK. The grey... A solid grey and then a variegated blue um, and I knitted that swatch before I left and then I charted out the pattern but as you saw in the video I didn't like it so I picked a bit of it and then this morning I re-knitted um, what I picked so that's what it looks like um, I'm going to seam this along here leaving a gap for the thumb so it'll become wrist warmers this is a small size um, it's I think it's going to be too small for me so I need to make a slightly bigger size as well but the idea is that hang on right that's, I'm gonna do this so the idea is that it's kind of like that so your thumbs here um, like that I don't know like that I don't know I'm uh, going to film a tutorial um, for my YouTube channel seaming the garter stitch um leaving us the gap for the thumb and because the way you seam garter stitch along the edge so this has garter stitch along the edge and you can seam garter stitch and make the seam completely flat so i'm going to film a little tutorial for that don't know whether i'm going to film it today or tomorrow um i've got a long list of stuff i need to do in today and tomorrow and i don't have enough time to do it basically but it means that you can uh, basically wear the mittens or the mitts either way. So this is the right side. Uh, but this side also looks nice. It doesn't look as defined as this side, I think. But by seaming this garter stitch, stitch edge, you can actually flip them inside out or wear them either way. So I'm going to film a tutorial on that maybe later, maybe tomorrow. It depends on... Uh, what time I finish doing a bit of work. We've been out this morning. I need to do a little bit of work now So it just depends on how long that will take me The other project I cast on before the weekend was, or over the weekend rather, was this project. Hang on, is that the way I say that? No, it's not to say that. Uh, so I knitted this swatch before I left on, I knitted on Thursday and um, measured the tension. So normally I recommend you knit quite a bit more than that to measure the tension, but I decided for the project I'm doing I didn't have to be that accurate. I decided this was long enough. So this is actually the wrong side when you're knitting it. Uh, so as you're knitting it that's the right side and obviously that's not very pretty so that's the side i want to have as the right side and because i was knew i was going to be knitting the actual project in the round i would be knitting it with that facing me all the time which looks a bit ugly and i would rather have that facing me it wouldn't be a problem to knit it with that facing me and just say the side facing you is the outside is the wrong side um but it's better to have the right side facing you, I think, when you knit in the round because then you can see what it looks like. So I was trying to work out how I could flip the stitch pattern and it was a lot easier than I thought it would. And I managed to work it out quite easily once I thought about it for a few seconds. So I cast them for that last night, I think it was, when I came home. I came home last night in time to watch Strictly Come Dancing. So I cast them for this. I knit a little bit on my brioche project and then I cast them for this. I knitted that. I knitted a couple of rounds this morning, I think, but that was mostly last night. A little bit worried I cost on too many stitches. That is the problem in making swatch that's a little bit too small. Um, I'm going to knit a few more rounds and I'll probably take it off and put it on a waist yarn or on a, one of those tubing stitch holder things and actually try because it it's going to be a cow. Um, and I only have a 60 centimeter long needle which might make it look smaller than it actually is. I'm using my Licky Needles um, 
or like yes a lot of people pronounce it which is wrong it's called licker but the way i'm knitting now i've got the right side facing me so i've done one pattern repeat yes one pattern repeat um and i can knit around with the right side facing me which i like because then i can see as i'm knitting what it looks like uh, and i quite like it so yeah this project is going to be coming with me on holiday i would like to try and finish it while i'm in spain i don't think i'll knit on this too much before i go i have it in my little um bim what's it called bimba ilola is a spanish fashion brand they do handbags and fashion and I, this is actually a toiletry bag, but I really like it because it's pink. Um, I've used it as a handbag a couple of times on holiday last year, um, or this year, no, last year. Um, so last year I got it when I was in Spain. And I used it uh, on holiday last year as a handbag, but I decided to use it as a project bag because it's quite easy to carry. And when I'm in Spain, if I want to knit on the balcony, I can just carry this out to the balcony. I can, it's got pockets on the front and the back. I can just put my phone in there, my lip balm, my um, headphones, all that kind of stuff, and carry it onto the balcony quite easily. And especially if I want to go up on the roof terrace, it's quite easy to just carry it upstairs. So I am probably will do a little bit on this before I go, but not a lot because I do want that to be my main project when I go away. I, it's easy enough. That I can knit on it on the plane, on the beach. I am taking a pair of socks as well, but I would like to try and finish that cow while I'm away, so it will be my main project. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I appreciate it. I will hopefully get one more Vlogtober video in before I leave for Spain. I'm going to try and film a little bit tomorrow and Tuesday from my workshops. I'm teaching lace knitting tomorrow and brush knitting, full day brush knitting on Tuesday. So I'm going to try and film a little bit from that. And then I will show you what I'm taking with me on holiday in terms of knitting projects and knitting notions. So I'm hoping to get a video up kind of late Tuesday evening. Um, we'll see how it goes. So much to do before I go. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.